And I was across the road from my wife, and he stops his car in park, gets out, and goes and punches her in the face. This is Lynn. He's been through more in the past month than most people experience in a lifetime. Multiple strokes, heart attacks, but his story of hardship began long before these recent health scares. Over a decade ago, Lynn was a successful businessman. He had a home, a thriving company, everything to lose. And he did lose it all. Falsely accused of a crime he did not commit, Lynn spent 10 years behind bars. 10 years stolen from his life. 10 years he will never get back. I was in prison for a long time, and I got out in 2014. I was exonerated, so. By the time he was exonerated, everything was gone. His business, his home, his savings, all wiped away. I ran across the street to help her, and that's how I ended up with a robbery charge. I got sentenced to a mandatory day for day. No parole, no good time, no nothing. I was not guilty, so I I took it back to trial. The system that wrongfully imprisoned him offered no support, no safety net. They simply spit him out onto the streets. Now, Lynn is struggling to survive. Homeless and with his health failing, he's facing an uphill battle. What'd you go in for? A jealous person... Well, I understand how the mistake was made, actually. He, um, he came home from work with his children, and he went into his apartment. Uh, this is his, his side of the story. I can show you the uh, court um, transcripts and such, but uh, he saw his house had been burglarized. Here's a chair you can use if you would like. So he calls the police, and he starts driving around, and he sees me and my wife. We had been hiking that day and um we just sat down to eat i own my own business everything else i was doing pretty good in life we sat down to eat we bought something at the uh, store there that little shopping center and um he's driving around and he sees things that belong to him my side of the story on that is after we was hiking we went to the store bought something to eat we sat down to eat person was walking by carrying some heavy bags I mentioned it's kind of heavy and hot for him to be carrying all that stuff. And I, he walked past and he went down and he tried to get on the bus, but the bus wouldn't let him on. And when he came walking back, I mentioned it to him. He said he had too much stuff. He was in a fight with his uh, girlfriend. She kicked him out with all his stuff. And the bus wouldn't let him on with all his stuff. He was broke. I offered to help him out. I gave him 100 bucks for uh, something he had in his bag. It was way too much money for what he had, but... He went through the bags and he just took a couple of things and he just left the, left the rest of it there. Now, I got too much stuff to get on a bus. And uh, we was pushing it down the road and he was driving around and he saw the things in the shopping cart. And we both got charged with burglary. Street, I didn't know what was going on. I ran across the street to help her and that's how I ended up with a robbery charge. But what strikes me most about Lynn isn't his hardship. It's his resilience. Even... In the face of an unimaginable adversity, Lynn maintains a positive attitude. He finds joy in the small things, and he hasn't given up hope. His story is a powerful reminder of the human spirit's ability to endure, even when faced with the worst that life can throw at you. This is just a glimpse into Lynn's life. His story is a call to action. We need to do better. We need to support those who have been wronged by the system. And we need to ensure that no one else suffers the same fate as Lynn. So I went from being a golden spoon in my mouth to dirt poor 